In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come to celebrate this Eucharist so that we might give praise to God and be more aware of God's presence, be more vigilant for his coming in our midst, in the midst of this day. So let us turn to God and ask for mercy, for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to bring us the good news of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to be ever vigilant to God's presence and God's coming. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with your spirit that we may continue your mission in the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were at that time, oh, I have the wrong day. Here we go. It's Wednesday. Yes. So it's still a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this I became a minister by the gift of God's grace, that what was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given, to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery, hidden from ages past in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the, part to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name, 
among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. <coughs> the Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely and the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of his severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So yesterday was laundry day, and it was laundry day because I ran out of clean t-shirts. That's always a sign to me that it's time to do laundry. Um, what this has to do with the gospel will be made clear, I hope. Um, so yesterday was laundry day, and so there were no clean t-shirts, and so I had to search around for a t-shirt, and I came upon one that somebody gave me a long time ago that had the words across it, Christ is coming, look busy. Christ is coming, look busy. Not be busy, just look busy. Um, and it reminded me of a summer that I spent working in uh, my Aunt Maureen's office in Manhattan. And this was way before flex time and remote uh, telecommuting and all that. So you had to be in the office from nine in the morning till five. In the, in the evening. And even if your work was finished at 4 or at 3.30, you still had to be at your desk until 5 o'clock. And you couldn't sit there and read a book. You had to look busy, shuffle papers, rearrange your desk drawer. Um, and one of the things I, I learned is that it's harder to look busy than to be busy. Um, Jesus in the gospel talks about the fact that, that the kingdom, that, that, that God may come at a time when, when we least expect it. It will be a surprise, an interruption in our ordinary day. And the lesson is not, not simply to look busy, but to be busy, to be busy about the work of God's kingdom, to be busy about being a disciple of Jesus. You probably heard that, that question, you know, if you were accused of being a Christian and hauled into court, 
would there be enough evidence to convict you? Or if you think about, you know, whether God could just pick a day at random from your life and say, well, you're going to be judged on this random day. Um, would you be scared or hopeful? Um, we're called to be about the business of God, no matter what walk of life we have. We're called to be busy with spreading the kingdom of God, with listening to the word of God and carrying it out. You know, for example, if when we meet the Lord and he says, well, you know, I thought you were, you know, I thought I told you to care for the least and the littlest. And our response is, well, you know, I was going to get around to that, but I was just doing other things. It's not, not a good response. Um, we're called to, to be alert and aware and, and act on the word of God, bringing the good news to others, caring for others in whatever little way we can each ordinary day. At the end of this passage, Jesus says, much will be required of the person entrusted with much. And we have been entrusted with much. We've been entrusted with the grace of God. We've been entrusted with the good news of the gospel. We've been entrusted with the presence of Jesus that we receive in the Eucharist. And so we're called to let that, all of that, bear fruit in our ordinary day. Not to just look busy, but to be busy. To be busy about truly being a disciple of Jesus. So let us offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for all those who are disciples of Jesus today, for the church, that we might be alert, that we might be busy spreading the good news of Jesus, carrying out his ministry, caring for people today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in the weeks ahead as our country moved towards an election. We ask that we might be guided by prudence, wisdom, and a concern for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked for our prayers. The Mass today is offered for, Pat, for Patrick and Peggy Casey, for all those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the benefactors and volunteers and friends of the Shrine that God may bless their generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick, those whom you know, for yourself, if you are sick. We pray for Marciana. We pray for all those suffering from the coronavirus throughout the world. We pray for those who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, we pray that God may welcome them into the fullness of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, you call us to follow your son Jesus each day. We bring before you our needs and we ask you to give us what we need to follow him, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God the loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, grant us a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope,